humans can do some pretty dope stuff. And it's all because we assign meaning to the pops and whistles we can make in our mouths. Recently, we began to study those sounds, so we made this, the International Phonetic Alphabet, which has a distinct letter for each sound, and you can tack on a bunch of symbols to make it more specific. That way, you can read the exact way something's pronounced, unlike in English. If you want to write exactly how something is said, use these brackets. If you want to say that it's pretty much pronounced this way, use these slashes. If you want to talk about the symbols that spell out a word in a certain language, use these. Got it? This bad boy is daunting, believe me, but you don't need to know all of them. And many of them are self-explanatory once you know what these words mean and you start paying attention to where your tongue is when you talk. Each sound you make is a collection of movements in your mouth and throat. Gross. Here's a diagram of the mouth where you make those different sounds. Let's focus on consonants first. With each sound, your mouth does a bunch of different things to shift around the air that you exhale. There are a few main categories of how and where this happens. You can see these up top. The ways that they're pronounced are on the side. So here's a one-to-one -one of the places of articulation, where your tongue, teeth, lips, and whatever else make these sounds. Try pausing this video and running your tongue around your mouth to get a feel for these places. This is General American. It's the accent that newscasters use, while also over-articulating and being dramatic with emphasis. In General American, you basically get the standard consonants for English. On the top here, you have the sounds where air is blocked off from the mouth and comes out the nose. Ma, na, nga. Take note of what your tongue does for each sound. For the M sound, your tongue does nothing. Your lips do the job and close off your mouth. For the N sound, your tongue blocks the air off right here, at the alveolar ridge right behind your teeth. Okay, I'm gonna say the N. For the NG sound, the back of your tongue touches the back of your mouth at what is called the soft palate. For a lot of languages, the sounds are more or less focused around these areas. The lips, the ridge behind your teeth, and the soft palate. But there are many other places in the mouth where you can articulate things. Down a level is the stops. In English, each of these happens in the same places as the nasals before. But a stop sound stops the air and lets it build up and then releases it quickly. Ba, da, ga. To a lot of you, that might have sounded like the B, D, and G sounds. English does this thing where sometimes P, T, and K are followed by a little puff of air, which you would write like this. So without this little puff of air that English, Greek, and Chinese use, you have ba, da, ga. So then what do these mean? Your mouth does the exact same things for these sounds as the ones that are right next to them, except these ones are voiced. If you don't know what that means, put your hand on your neck and make the F sound. Now make the V sound and switch between the two. The V sound vibrates and is a lot louder. This is called voicing because you're using your vocal cords to make the sound, whereas with the F sound, you're basically whispering it out. Voicing is the difference between these bad boys and the rest of the letters that are put next to each other on this table. Next, you got the fricatives, sounds that are created when air is continuously forced out of a small opening in the mouth. The ones that sound kind of hissy are distinguished from the other ones. What is he capable of? Because you make them differently, using the blade of the tongue to force air out through a small pocket. So here you get the S and Z sounds, and the SH and ZH sounds, sha, ja, and some others behind those that are used in different languages. Right below that, in the non sibilant fricatives, you get classic sounds like fa, va, tha, and tha. These two are self-explanatory, because it's the same in English, but these two are the th sounds. That's right, I said sounds, because if you say that and thing, one th is voiced and the other isn't. Some English dialects and a lot of other languages use the ha sound, 
which is the Spanish J or Russian X. Have you ever seen someone say ja 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 or xa 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 xa? That's why, because they're actually pronounced ha 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 ha. Laughing. But if you don't know how to pronounce this sound, you can figure it out using the column and row on the IPA table. You can see that it's pronounced in the same velar column as the K sound, and it's a fricative, so you force air through a small opening. So if you make the K sound but keep your tongue close to the soft palate, you can make it. Ka, ka. And if you want to be able to do it easily, you just have to practice. One step down are the approximants, where the airflow is obstructed a teeny bit. In English, we have three: the Y sound, the R sound, and the W sound. Ya, ra, wa. The Y is represented by a J because it works like that in a lot of different languages. But where's the W sound? If you've been actively paying attention to what your mouth does, you should see that W comes from both lips, so it should be in the first column, the bilabial, right? Well, the wa sound is actually pretty funky because it's actually an approximate in the back of the mouth, where the back of the tongue closes up a little bit too. It's a velar approximate, ga, but also with rounded lips, like you're saying the u sound. So you just add a little W to it, wa. And that little W is the same one that turns the K sound into the Q U sound, gua. But this can also be written as this because that's just easier. All right, let's take a stretch break. And give me your best rolled R. Ra. And to those of you who say you can't, you are naysayers, and I believe in you. You just have to practice getting it wrong until you get it right. That being said, I'm skipping straight to the trills category. A trill is basically made the same way as a balloon's farting sound is, where air makes part of your mouth flop around and hit something two or three times. You can trill the tip of your tongue, ra, your lips. Or your uvula, ra, or even your epiglottis, which I don't think I can do. Ra, yeah, it's kind of gross. A tap is like a trill, except it only hits it once. And there's really only one tap sound that is common in a lot of languages: the ra sound, like in butter, or the way I pronounce it, anyways. Next on are the lateral sounds, the l sounds. Which is where your tongue touches part of your mouth and the air goes around it. This one is the regular L sound, like in lady, la, or this slightly different dark L sound, which has a bigger pocket in the back of the mouth, so it's velarized, la, as opposed to la. The rest of the lateral sounds are pretty self-explanatory as long as you understand how to pronounce something in accordance with these columns, and I think you can figure it out after this video. My boy's wicked smart. You also get affricates, which are stop sounds that are followed immediately by a fricative that's made in the exact same place. So you get things like cha, cha, ka, fa, that kind of stuff. The thing that all of those sounds have in common is that they're pulmonic. They're made with the air that comes from the lungs when you exhale, but not every sound is made this way. These ones are made using only the air in your mouth. We're gonna see what that mouth do. The adjectives, a, 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 the clicks, a, 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 and that one doesn't actually align with the K sound, but with this stop that's pronounced in the same place as the Y Y sound, da, and finally the implosives, a. Da, da. And that last one doesn't line up with K either, even though there is one that does that. But the ba、uh, sound is the sound that we use to represent like gulping a drink or something, <laughs> and that aligns with this uvular Q stop. Ba.、Uh. All right, so that's it for the consonants. Now it's on to the vowels. Vowels can be anything at the center of a syllable. Yes, even consonants. Just take a look at how you say Serbia in Serbian. Serbia. But these are the vowel vowels. These sounds are all made with an open mouth and are voiced. An unvoiced vowel would basically just be h. 
What value you make depends on how open your mouth is. E, 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 A, A. How far back it's being made. A, A, A. And if your lips are rounded or not. E, U, E, U, A, O. The thing about vowels is that they're not as concrete to write as consonants are. Because it's very hard to pronounce a vowel in exactly the area that it's written. They can be anywhere between these areas. These symbols are basically just markers to indicate where they're closest to. So most of the time, vowels are written with these unexact slashes. The most common ones are a, e, i, o, and u. Unaccented and unstressed vowels usually push the vowel more towards the center. The very middle and most common vowel being the schwa sound. Uh, like consonants, each vowel sound can be modified using different symbols. But there are a lot of ways to do this. A vowel can be long, like in amu, have tones, like in ma, be nasally, like in macron, and a bunch of other things that usually aren't huge in languages but can often make a big difference. For syllables, you put this in front of one to make it accented or stressed, and this for a secondary accent. Just look at this in Tenochtitlan. And then you get diphthongs where one vowel sound glides into another, like in English I, au, and ar. With each of these, you start with one sound, mostly a, ah, and go down to more closed or middle sounds. R is a little different because it actually goes down to the schwa, but it's not a regular schwa, it's r-colored, which means that part of the throat closes up a little bit to constrict the air, so you get that distinctive American er sound. You also get diphthongs that go the other way though, like if you say Boston in a Boston accent, Boston, and some shift between the front and the back of the mouth, like in Old English, gald. I think it sounds like you're throwing up, but I'm American, I really can't say that much about it. Err. There's so much more about the specifics of the IPA. Tiny stuff. Like, do you make that S sound with the tip of your tongue, or right behind the tip of your tongue? I don't know, who cares? Basque, why do you care? I'd suggest that if you want to learn all of it, you just look into each thing as it interests you. You'll wind up with 4,000 open tabs, but let's be real, when you're doing this, you're not very busy. And for each sound you want to learn, just keep practicing it and listening to samples of other people doing it. So for you Spanish R naysayers out there, I say that you need to believe in crap. Hey, the bell doesn't dismiss you. I'm the one.